Hi guys, good afternoon. Um, we're going to try and get through this video as quickly as possible because we're losing this natural light as it's quite late. Um, just to say, I'm really sorry that I haven't been able to upload my top five um, picks this week and um, same picks. Um, hopefully, I might be able to upload it. I might be able to actually film it and upload it tomorrow. If I don't get time tomorrow, I'm probably just going to skip this week and we'll just hopefully be able to start again and carry on on Sunday. Um, as always, guys, quick spoiler alert before we start this review. Um, we will be spoiling parts of Gotham. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this um, eighth episode. Okay then, let's jump straight into it with the title of the episode. So we are reviewing today Season 2, Episode 8, Tonight's the Night. Now with the title, I'm actually a bit confused if I'm honest, because I'm not really sure what's going on, um, because most of the action actually happened during the daytime. But the most important things actually happen during the night time, which is why I assume it's called Tonight's Night. I mean, they could have been really cheesy, the writers, and actually referencing the Spice Girls song, you know, um, Tonight is the night when two become one, and all that stuff. But I really doubt that, because it was a wedding, you know, and I just thought like, it went through my mind. Um, but I don't think it is that. Um, I think that's highly unlikely. Um, so, my five words or under... Uh, I've only got three words this week, um, and the three words are a great development. Um, again, you'll see why as we go through the review. So, um, Jim Gordon then, we'll go on to first. Now, Jim this week, I was really mad at him following Barbara and kind of falling into her trap. Um, again, the crash with him, Harvey and Barbara in the police car, and then the lorry crashing into them was actually very horrific and quite terrifying um, and then him being intimidated and tied up by Barbara I found it strangely exciting um, to be honest and then trying to save Barbara show Barbara sorry, trying to save her shows that there's kind of a, a nicer side to him which I like I like seeing his good side to him still I don't want to see him becoming subject to this evil conformation of Gotham police officers um, I like him being kind of individual. Um, and then him finding Mayor James and arresting Galavan at the end was brilliant. I think he's very, he's so brave to be able to be arresting Galavan considering he is now the new mayor. Um, I think it's interesting. Um, Harvey Bullock then, our second character. So Harvey this week was in it a, much more, uh, was in it a lot more, so it's brilliant. Um, I loved how he was looking out for Jim, you know, making sure that he didn't get sucked back into Barbara's mind games and stuff because he didn't want to get hurt. And I think that's really sweet um, that Harvey now, whereas at the beginning of season one, Harvey just didn't want to know anything to do with Jim at all. And now the fact that they're really good friends and that they look out for each other, I think that's really nice. Um, and I think Harvey disobeying um, Nathaniel Barnes was risky. Um, so, actually on the subject of Nathaniel, let's go on to Nathaniel Barnes, uh, Captain Nathaniel Barnes, sorry. Um, so there was more involvement this week from him, although still not, amount, uh, still not a huge amount of screen time. I think there needs to be a lot more. Um, I think there could have been more last night, but they just didn't really give him that time. Um, yeah, that's about really all I've got to say for him. Um, Leslie Tompkins, so Jim Gordon's girlfriend. Um, she had a lot more to do last night. The jealousy of Barbara and the concern for Jim was well acted, I thought. She did really well at that. Um, and then being captured um, by Barbara and then distracting her, I thought that was a really clever plan because it allowed Jim to save them both um, and allowed them to escape, essentially. Um, so Leslie kind of was the hero almost of last night's episode. In a way, um, a little bit of a yeah, confirmation way. Um, Bruce and Alfred um, as our final heroes then. Um, now Bruce's decision to keep Wayne Enterprises was an interesting move and I think the fact that he didn't send it over to Galavan means that he still believes that he can save Wayne Enterprises for himself. Which is good because we like to see a bit of independence from Bruce now and again because I feel like he's just kind of relying too much on everybody else to kind of protect him. And it's good that he's allowing you know himself to stand it's, allowed, it's good that he's standing up for himself um silver's still trying to dig her claws into him and i don't think it's working i think bruce is very aware to keep his distance from her and understanding what she's doing which is quite good um and the one scene that although well, there was a couple of scenes of alfred but alfred wasn't really a lot but 
one scene that sticks in my mind is the one there in the back cave where Alfred and Bruce were talking and then Bruce basically started crying um, and Alfred was just giving him a massive hug and I thought it was just a really sweet scene. I love looking them. I love them two together. I think they're brilliant actors. Um, so on to uh, Penguin. Now he wasn't really in it until the end. It was only he was literally the last scene um, when Enigma came across the caravan in the woods, and there he was with his injured state. But I want to know: Will Enigma and Penguin team up now? Are they going to become allies? Is this something that we want to see, guys? Comment in the co yeah, post in the comments if you think this is something you want to see, and if it's something you think we will see. Um, I want to see it. I think we're brilliant. Um, so, which leads me naturally on to Edward Enigma. Now he had great development again, um, I think it's confirmed that it's now the Riddler, the fact that he told Miss Kringle when he was burying, uh, um, he said, you know, this is a toast to you, you mate, I was broken, but now I am one, and I think now, now I'm whole, and I think that was amazing seeing that, um, and the fact that he murdered somebody who saw him burying the box containing Miss Kringle was interesting, and I want to see what he does about Penguin as well, I want to see whether he helps Penguin or not, which would be very good, um, to see next week. So on to Barbara Keane. Um, um, now Barbara had a fantastic episode this week. Um, she had so much to do, which was, um, in my opinion, she was the main villain of the week. Um, it's fun to watch her. She's such a good actress. I think she's got such a, I don't know, there's something about her. Um, I kind of love the fact that she's getting sicker but doesn't acknowledge it. And I just think that I don't want her to die um, after she fell from the cathedral. Um, I don't really want her to die because I actually really like her as a character. Um, it would be a shame if she does die, I think. Um, and finally then on to the Galavans. Now, Theo's plan um, to tempt Bruce was evil, but to be expected, I think, now that we know what his plan is, to kill Bruce, essentially. Um, and Tabitha getting shot was actually surprising. Um, because to me, so far this season, she seemed invi uh, invincible. Um, but I don't think she'll get she'll get killed completely. I don't think she'll, she'll get killed because um, Tabitha becomes Tigress, and Tigress is in the comic books of Goth of Batman. So I'm pretty sure she won't die. Uh, and finally, just a word before the conclusion: um, the absence of Butch, Selina, Zaz, and Lucius was quite noticeable. Um, I just felt like with the storyline they had, they were just trying to fill things in a little bit. Um, so yeah, um, you know, there was some scenes that just felt like fillers. Um, so yeah, as my overall conclusion then, guys, um, it was an exciting episode, with excellent acting, but not enough story to carry the full 45 minutes. I think they dragged us in, I think they dragged it out a little bit too long with storylines. Um, maybe they could have included a bit more, I don't really know. But even despite that, my overall rating is an 8.5 out of 10 because it was a really good episode and I look forward to seeing what they do with it next week. So yeah, that's it guys for this week's Gotham Review. It was a shorter version again, um, which is much better for some of you to see a shorter version than some of the 17 minute videos we were getting at the beginning of the season. And that's because I'm just trying to keep everything as compact as possible. So of course I didn't get time to talk about everything, but I just included the main things that I remember from the episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video guys, you can go back and watch all my other videos, they'll be on the playlist um, on my channel page. You can subscribe down below and you can like this video as well, and you can give any comments that you feel like um, giving. Um, and go check out my other video guys. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a rest, good rest of the day. See you later, bye!